basically just want to discuss the details to get it dropped here now instead of wasting okay. more okay. court time with you. Okay, well tell me what you think you want me to know. For uh, Resi, yeah, I was thinking um, if, if, if you guys wanted to just sort of present what you think is her case first. I'm just his brother's friend. Legal advice. Okay. Yeah, this well, I mean, I'm not going to present my case to you because um, I have to do that in court. But if you... Well, the um, if you just want to like read through the actual police I have. report. I have. Okay, so maybe we could read the statute 773 and see how it applies. Okay. I guess what we were concerned about is basically um, it's really called controversial to extend um, a arm of the law to a private property. Basically, the whole contention was a meeting that it doesn't matter if it's a meeting or not. I was on private property, the mall company. And so I can see your defense of the statute of um, uh, the purpose is to prevent uh, problems with traffic. But the problem with that is it's a future crime, and I don't necessarily have to go out onto the public portion of the road. And if a but transaction. You did. No, I didn't. Uh, this go. is private property. Okay. We That's have a map to show that that was not actually listen, a street. Listen, so I'm not here to be attacked. And I'm you, not here. No. You say it's no. public property. You I'm saying clone. you That's went false. into the street. Okay. That was still on private property, okay. though. I never went street, 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 though. Okay. Which marketplace is actually not in a street or highway intersection in the state of Colorado. It's a marketplace. It's not an actual entity. Okay. Road. So you say he went out into the street. Which street was that? Just so we can get Because if it says purposes. 104th, that's an actual falsified information of a police report of that county. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I can see why, uh, I can see why a person who always comes in here always falls under guiltiness of your cops doing your job right. My brother and I run into it where we run into gray enough areas where when we try to plead our innocence, the more you guys and the cops try to convict us because it looks obvious that I'm trying to get out of the misdemeanor. Um, that's not the case here. Um, this was homeless discrimination. This is profiling. This is a waste of my time, and okay. considering there's a whole host of lawsuits behind it, it's tantamount to witness tampering. Witness tampering? Yes. Okay. Wasting time. Once a frivolous lawsuit wastes somebody's time, if they happen to be in other lawsuits, and that all those other previous lawsuits aren't dealt with, and that the time it takes those other people uh, to be dealt with in court has been delayed, that's witness tampering. The whole point is uh, finding wiggle rooms of uh, camping on uh, public roads blocked off for two days um, because I'm poor, disabled, and I need to be pursuing these lawsuits. Um, I know within a, without a doubt on a private property or a mall company, the worst I can get is a warning and at most a hate crime of don't ever come back here again. Um, well, you've been in the best house from there, so I assume you're going to be there again. Obviously, yes. Would but I will eventually get that lifted because that's banning me from federal land, okay. definitely. So well, you didn't really come here to talk well, to me no. about this? Actually, I came here to yeah. drop it, actually. Okay, and I'm not going to. Okay, so we uh, can we just go through the four variables of the statute then? No, we, we cannot, because this is not your set time. I don't even know who you are. Well, the um, point is, is uh, if we go to a jury trial, this is going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not going to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. With how much it's effort is it going to You're entitled to the presumption of innocence in this, not a Okay, uh, tell her that I talked to... The city I'm clerk's office. Right here. You can start and to talk to me. Okay, then, to then here's the variables. We, we talked uh, to, we talk to the, the city, city clerk's office right after we talked to, uh, right after you got ticketed. I went and I talked to the city clerk's office. Uh, they talked to the city attorney. The city attorney uh, volunteered the information that he did not believe Marketplace was a street. Okay. We also used a map that provided by your county to show that that doesn't even exist as a street. Okay. So it's a Marketplace, and every one of them I asked, because I posed as a anti-abortionist solicitator, uh, they all voluntarily gave me the information that that is not a meeting, and that as long as I had permission of the private property owner for trespassing purposes, which if you don't have, uh, you saw that first warning before they told you, that as long as I'm passing um, or walking up into the private property, I'm, I'm never actually in the public roadway. And so these statutes are, one, he's not on a meeting, okay, I, two, I don't, he's not I, public also property. Also, I was held okay. for Three. identification reasons for a security guard, which means a cop uh, held me for private reasons only on private land, and I read case law everywhere that a security
security guard is not allowed to force you uh, for identification, let alone a police officer or a security guard. And that was the number of the two. Yeah, that's so what we're saying that. is there's a whole host of crimes here that's going to make this really controversial to keep pursuing it. Okay. So exactly what, um, so you say it was uh, he was going out on the public roadway. That's your defense in court. Our defense is it was private property. Again, and you're not going to win that. that court. What's the property, next one? Like you, like, yeah. you know, it's not even on cop cameras walking out there. So if your defense is no longer that he was uh, stepping out onto the roadway uh, because uh, he had confirmed prior that it was private property and also that we've confirmed that it's not a median via your uh, city manager, the next step the would city be manager, city attorney, city, attorney, um, the city, the like uh, city clerk, whoever she got the confirmation from, you can go talk to her. Okay. So, um, well, don't worry, I got one too. So the next one is... Um, since there is, uh, since he's not stepping on the roadway, since he's not in a median, the only thing ready would be uh, the park curfew, or sorry, uh, not the park curfew, the uh, ability to park somewhere, and also um, he's not going and accessing anything on a what public roadway. This and so there's only uh, four statutes. What is your name? Uh, my name is William. Okay, William, why don't you have a seat out in the hallway since you're not part of this case? And um, you're really making it difficult. Does he have an attorney? I approve for him to be at my meetings with me. But I don't. So unless he's your legal counsel, I'm asking him to step out. Actually, I'm allowed to bring anyone into my meetings, especially if it's a family member. No, you're not. What are you talking about? This is you're Actually, asking to have a pre-trial pre arraignment, arraignment, arraignment with the prosecutor in Fort Collins that allowed my brother to sit. So okay. I already know a municipality. Allows I it. don't care what they allowed. I'm saying he's disruptive, and if you would like to talk to this case. I'm happy to talk to you for another five minutes about it, but I don't want to hear him running his mouth so he can have a seat out there unless he's your legal counsel. We're not having a productive conversation here because I have two of you spewing law that you maybe or maybe not don't know anything about at me at the same time. You came to talk to me. I'm happy to listen to you. I'm not happy to listen to both of you anymore. So I'm asking you to step out of my office. If you want to leave too, I'm certainly fine with that. I'm happy to listen to what you have to say, but I'm not listening to the both of you throw, I'm homeless, I'm being discriminated on, I'm on private property. I can barely hear what you're saying, okay? Okay. So do you want to step out? Would you like me to talk to you for another five minutes? I'm happy uh, to write down your... You don't remain speak silent. Out. I don't know your name. That's legally impossible. Okay. Well, it's not because you're not hooked together. So... Okay, here, I'll leave. You know what? No. That is against federal law. I'm not allowing my brother to be with me. It is in your best interest as a prosecutor to not I allow a charge of racketeering to happen in your okay, you So, so you it's think that it's actually that's obedient that's when it's not, and mm -hmm. your own city clerk Sir, office told here. me all the way. Please go for it. What's the statute? Sir, what's the statute? Let's get you out of here. Okay? What's the statute? If you continue, we're going to start. What's your name, ma'am? Thank you. What was her name? She's prosecuting attorney. There you go. Rapid steering is a serious charge. Can I talk to the city clerk's office upstairs, please? What? May I talk to the city clerk's office upstairs? I had spoken with them before about something. City clerk's upstairs. Okay, thank you. We'll go there in a second. You have a piece of paper. I don't have a printer. Wow, you guys are about to lose a couple million dollars Probably on your own. This one. Uh, at least the cost of your own jury trial alone. Um, that's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. She literally said uh, he was walking out on a public roadway. We went in private to property. Ticket, not to waste your taxpayer dollars. Your taxpayer dollars. Your taxpayer dollars. Well, can you help me write this out here? Here, no, no, no. Just, uh, let's go upstairs. I've never been so disappointed in a fucking. You know why? We squashed that prosecutor immediately. Yeah. She's fired. Uh, oh, oh, median. That's private. That's blah blah blah. You Are walked you really out to the road. That? Are you really gonna defend that? Come in a while ago and spoken to a couple of clerks here 
about an issue uh, regarding a statute and some interpretation of that. I just kind of wanted to see if I could follow up on that. So, uh, what, what ordinance was it? Um, it was 773, and I was the anti-abortionist uh, that came in that was wondering about um, if I would be ticketable on private property and so forth. Okay. I was getting permission from the uh, mall owner, if you recall, Northland uh, okay. Mall. Uh, I was, uh, I think I recall you briefly. So you were, yeah, you were probably talking to the city clerk. Yep. And, she um, had talked. To, she said to the city manager and or city attorney to confirm that that wasn't a meeting, basically. That that was what? That what that I was talking about was not a meeting for the purposes of enforcing the ordinance. Okay. And so I just I just had a lot of follow up questions. So a meeting. Um. I believe what you were discussing was marketplace as a mall company, if it was a public road or not. Okay. Yeah. So like within. Like in their parking lot? Yeah, yeah, there's a there's a there's a road there it's called Marketplace. And so you got permission from the property owner well, to be there in the median? In this case, um, while there was no permission uh, volunteered by the other side, um, there was no warning given and so it was a public private entity that he was allowed to be on, in this case David, um, until he gets that warning. And so um, essentially we just needed to talk to the city clerk because of a message that we need to forward her um, because we had attempted to talk to the city attorney down there and uh, we're basically trying to stop a jury trial over a definition trying to stop a frivolous so lawsuit in your jurisdiction that's uh, wasting our so time. So trying to what, I'm sorry? Stop a frivolous lawsuit. A cop ticketed me on private property. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. And so he so had already received, been here. You received a ticket on private property and so you're yes. wanting... We tried to talk to the district attorney down there, or yeah. city, city attorney. She Just wanted to push it, and it's like... Yeah, and she, she stopped at the definition of, or she stopped talking, um, uh, when we tried to clarify that a median is not public property, and that he was uh, never stepping out onto uh, public property because he was on private property the entire time. And It's uh, not like a stab on private property. What I'm trying to say is it was completely unjustified outside the jurisdiction to stop me on that property. Yeah. So. Hey. Do you remember these gentlemen? Um, I remember. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, took the cold. Here's how the story goes. Okay. Um, uh, David Montgomery is my brother. Okay. Uh, before I even came in and talked to you guys, uh, he was actually in a uh, marketplace on the non-road there that we discussed. Right. And then we had confirmed. And I actually looked up a map too later. Um, and then you guys confirmed that that's not the public county property. Map and the and everything. Yeah, so there's no there's no marketplace in the public road, so we've already established that. Um, there's no public property for someone to be stepping out onto. And if you guys recall, I had gotten permission, or um, I had uh, explained to you guys that if I were to have gotten permission from the property owners, if there's no trespassing issues there, that you would not be able to apply your statute because uh, you guys all had agreed that me as the anti-abortionist. Um, you basically said, oh yeah, that's marketplace, it's private property, as long as you got permission by the owner. And so the variable of the median is kind of uh, determined um, b before with you guys when I came in, because uh, we were asking and we wanted to play the other side, you know? Mm -hmm. The definition of walking out onto the public roadway was also covered. And then basically, uh, the only other two variables were if it's included in the interstate highway system, which it wasn't, it's all that and its exits are. And so that was the... The whole solicitation ticket. And then one. Um, and then there was one more, which was something about uh, there needing to be a safe parking spaces accessible for someone if they needed to park in order to feel safe that they could. And of course, this was near a ton of parking spaces. And so... I guess what he's trying to say is the soliciting ticket was meant for uh, if you're on the side of a highway, uh, I'm homeless. Uh, I'm not an aggressive panhandler. I was just reading the speech. And they wrote it uh, close enough and what we're trying to get Well, at no, that's not even a highway. No, the, the 104, there's not a highway. No, I'm just saying it was meant for, like, the exit of I-25. Yeah. Soliciting yeah. nowhere to park. You're walking up traffic yeah. to get in a car crash or something. But I'm, like, about 100 to 200 feet away on a private mall. Yeah, so, so really quick, there's, there's three variables that are at play as to why this officer wrote the ticket. If you guys read the police report, and what we're trying to do is get the one side to talk to the other side, because 
Uh, one, you guys already admitted and agreed that medians on private properties are not medians. And that's the one of the four statutes requirements. Uh, two, uh, uh, since it was private property and they admitted it was private property, he's never two. entering out on the public road. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just and then um, from there, since there wasn't included in the highway system, it's kind of an obvious one. And so what we're trying to do is, uh, since you guys already confirmed with the city attorney that uh, you will no longer, that you would not be pursuing charges on somebody on a marketplace street. Wait. Okay. So you're saying we confirmed with the city attorney that we wouldn't? That you would not be. I didn't be, do that. Um, I have on tape that whoever was here had confirmed with me. With that the plan, no, what with I did. With the planner that, or yeah, city manager or here. whoever it was. Yeah, I went down to planning and development. Okay, so planning and development. Yeah, to ask them if the marketplace was private property. And they were the ones who, who confirmed okay. that, um, yeah, the, the, the median and the. Yeah, exactly. In and the it's marketplace all private. is private property. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, assumed, uh, is it safe to assume at the very least without having to reconfirm with him that the pavement on both sides of that mar median is also private property? So it's not a street or anything. So uh, what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, we can go talk to the city uh, planner or whatever. Um, uh, but since the cat's out of the bag, you guys know that I had already pre-confirmed to the best of our abilities uh, that we would not be in violation of the statute. That's what we just tried to explain to the city attorney down there. And she wants to push this to trial. So we're actually legitimately not trying to uh, waste the taxpayer dollar. We're not, you know, we knew yeah. beforehand what the statute was. We knew what to follow, and we're actually really legitimately concerned yeah. that she doesn't know what the definition of median is, and that's what her defense is going to I just caught her on tape stating that she's like, oh, you're going out of the roadway. Um, that's not according to the police report. That's not according to David's defense. That's not according to our defense as a whole. Um, yeah. the, uh, I mean, what we talked about when you, you so were in here the last time, was whether it was private property or a roadway or a public roadway, and when I talked to planning and development, and they said, "Yeah, the, the going into the marketplace is private property, but you would need permission from the property owner in order to to solicit within the yep. the roadway there." Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, we found basically the bureaucratic wiggle room of that, which is any public private entity out there. Um, it doesn't matter that it's skateboarding or. Uh, holding signs or loitering. There's no specific charges for any of those. They always simply require a notice, a formal notice to be given first. Um, the notice could be, if I ever see you skateboarding again, you're banned, or you're banned all rights out, uh, outright completely. And so that was just kind of a side conversation I had planted for you guys so that you wouldn't try and derail the the original court case and try and focus on trespassing when it, it would prove never applicable. And in this case, he never got a warning beforehand. When he did get the warning, he left, obviously. Um, and, you know, I was there too occasionally. And, I, you know, if I ever got the warning, I would. And so the private property was just kind of our way of getting that answer from you guys that you would that you knew without having to case lot that well, that's we were not just a meeting. Yeah, we were just saying whether or not it was public or private property. Yep. We exactly. have nothing to do with what PD enforced. And I think I even told you that that day that you know, you probably want to talk to them regarding oh what yeah, they yeah. would. Yep, yep, and we did. And yeah, they confirmed that they wouldn't, uh, yeah, so they confirmed that they wouldn't write tickets on private property either. Okay. Uh, they said, you know, uh, permission and so forth. And so while um, the ticket's already written and you can't really deal with anything here, our our goal is, since we can't, since we, since we just tried to talk to the city attorney, she seems to think that that median is public property or okay. that the, property on both sides of it that he was stepping out on the public property. We're just trying to say, you guys, that's your only defense. Um, that was what she alluded to. Uh, that's kind of where the conversation broke down. Okay. You guys, you know, free job promotion, you know. <laughs> we're, 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 we're legitimately trying not to break your laws, and we have defenses that you guys already confirmed, but we're not stupid. We're not going to go out of the you know, media and stuff. So she seems to think that that's just lies and stuff like that. And so if you guys want to take it to trial, you know, we can. We can discuss this all at trial. But it seems like it's so obvious that if you guys figure it out, if you talked to and I've posed as some anti-abortionist guy, not a homeless guy, she downstairs was kind of discriminating against potentially. Um, she didn't want to take it at any face value. And so I'm just saying, you know, so we talked before, you kind of know the situation. You know that that's uh, uh, not a median. You know, if you guys could just kind of try and get, uh, you know, your city planner or the 
guys can talk to the city attorney's office down there. They are very intent on prosecuting this. Like you said, it's, you know, uh, you know, due process, if you guys, you take it to this. Uh, we're willing to take it to trial, but honestly, because of how it looks like that's the only defense, we're just really worried you guys are just going to waste a lot of money. Right. So, so that's we're all still you separate guys. from the court downstairs, and I mean, but you can talk to him. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I'm assuming your brother got the ticket. Yeah. Can I have his name? Because yeah. if I have the city planner, you know, contact yeah, the absolutely. prosecutor, that might help. Yeah, it, exactly. That's all we want is that um, they. I don't think they well, realize. There are not that many you know. Tickets like that, so they might know right off the top of their head, but just in yeah. Case. And, um, well, if you just read the police report itself, um, the officer tried to use that there was no soliciting signs as probable cause. Um, he mentioned that it was a median, so he thought it was median too, that was probably probable cause. And he was, um, it was just so obvious that he was posing as someone else to get, get some answers. Um, I mean, unfortunately, even regardless of the information that we might provide, it's the city prosecutor's prerogative. Yeah, I think this um, what concerns me the most is, um, and, and, and honestly, uh, it, if there's ever any way you could possibly call me back on this issue yourself, um, I'll be completely honest. I was standing on the side of a road, and um, I knew the statue, and cops approached me. Uh, I told them I knew the statue. I said, look, I know not, not to step out on the traffic. Um, look, I'm not on my median, and uh, basically he said uh, he doesn't care, and uh, felt as though he still had the original reasonable suspicion that a crime had been committed, and he ran my ID, nothing found, uh, but uh, that was a huge violation of my fourth amendment, um, where basically uh, what I wanted to ask you guys was if you could get back to me, uh, do you guys have the right to ticket someone just for simply standing there on the side of the road? Let's say you, you know, obviously don't um, okay. witness them go out in the traffic. You maybe stay there as a cop for five minutes and you're hanging, watching them to see if they do. And if they never do, can you just simply go up to them and just take them? And if not, can you simply go up to them and require their IDs? Because the same thing of ticketing is there's the original suspicion of crime, regardless. And so, um, basically, uh, just it's like the most simple question. Can you ticket somebody for standing on the side of a public street for holding it? You know, and uh, the why behind the what, if you guys are always curious. Um, so were you soliciting? Uh, no, just holding okay. a sign. And so soliciting, okay. as far as I know, yeah. is uh, actively in engaging somebody, um, okay. interrupting them, force legal interaction kind of thing. Uh, this was a passive holding of the sign. Okay. And so, it, yeah, it wasn't even soliciting there. Um, let's see what I'm concerned about, and um, just you know, a heads up for you guys. Uh, while this may not be an issue for for people yet, as homelessness continues on the rise because of cost of living issues, um, there's a Terry versus the people law out there. Like I remember, um, you, you can't just go ask people for for their IDs willy nilly. They have to be actually a suspect of some sort of criminal activity. And when the officers kept stating that I was under some suspicion of criminal activity, I, I asked them what the statute was. They said the solicitation, but they never gave me the statute uh, numbers, and they never actually went through them with me. I actually bought my, I had it memorized, so I just went to talk to them, and I'm like, hey, man, uh, am I an immediate? No. Uh, am I stepping out? Okay, so where's your reasonable suspicion? Oh, I still believe that you're committing crimes, and it's like... Well, you just ran my name over what you think was a crime committed, and in the end, if it's not a crime committed, it's a false imprisonment charge because you detained. I asked them, "Are you guys detaining me?" Yes, you're under suspicion of a crime. You never told me what my crime was, guy. Okay. You know, and uh, like I said, I told them what the crimes were, and they refused to acknowledge that I. And, and it was kind of weird. Later, I caught up to him and I asked him, like, "So, wh why do you think I still have reasonable suspicion? Um, did you get a chance to read the statute?" And he's like. Oh, you telling me that um, that you weren't going out there? Uh, I consider that a lie, and he basically wouldn't believe me. And so it's well, I'll finish with this: is I feel like he tried to get his reasonable suspicion to run my ID, claiming that it was a def like using his defamation of oh, I can't believe you that you won't go out there 
Um, that's a future crime. That's never happened. You can't assume that I will. You can't assume that I'm going to lie and go and do that. And so when I t gave him the statue, for all intents and purposes, I thought that was enough to remove his reasonable suspicion that I was no longer going to be committing this crime. And still, he felt as though it was necessary. He said, that that I need to And so, you know, if this turns out to be a false imprisonment lawsuit, uh, you know, I'm really concerned with anybody else that's standing on the street or somebody just assumes that they're, and like the, how I worded it was, it seemed as though he assumed that anybody standing on the street corner would automatically cause them to go out and walk out. And I tried to tell him, it's not an automatic. I, I learned my statue. And he's like, so you mean you're not going to walk out in people's uh, ways? And I was like, I'm actually waiting for the day where I have to turn them down because they're too far away. And I'm like, hey, sorry, I can't. Uh, your law of state, I can't. So I explained this all as fast as I could before I gave my ID so that he would understand that it's all him in that boat at that point if he really still thinks a crime is being committed. And of course, when I gave him the ID and they ran it, they said, have a good day, bye. Uh, I was like, you're not going to sit beside me? You're not, there's no investigation. You just want to, you know, uh, throwing this out there. Um, there's a, also a bigger problem going on, just generally speaking, is that the whole reason why we're in here is David started off as the person on the corner. Uh, he got warned and removed and ticketed and so forth. It's understandable. Um, but uh, when I was on that corner, ironically, the security guard decided to mistake me as him and uh, called in a false report that David Montgomery was the one that was trespassing. And so when the officers showed up there, I saw them talking to the, uh, him on the other side of the street. I saw them come over and park in front of me, and I, I knew exactly the, why they were there. And so that's why I refused to give up any information of my name or identity, because I knew that the whole reason why they wanted the identity was to get the name run, because they had, a, they had suspected that I was the person across the street. Except that they didn't start off a conversation like that. They didn't start off, hey, you're a suspect in a trespassing charge across the street. We need to, we have reasonable suspicion. No, they specifically said, because um, I already started talking to them about the previous occasion, and they're like, we're not talking about that right now. Hey, we're talking about here and now. You're holding a sign right here now. So. Oh, yeah. Hey, keep an eye on him. No, no, no. No, we're good. We're good. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for the beat. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the real issue is um, while you can... So while you can get falsified information reported to you from a, a security guard, you have no control over that. So they had reason to stop you. So, uh, because of the new statute, they... I felt as though they changed up their defense as to why they needed to stop me so that they could have their reason for running the ID, because I know you can't just go stop somebody who's really running an ID. So I don't know really why they didn't just go with the original um, reasoning for why they stopped me, but like I said, they thought as though they could use some new statute, and when I kept arguing with them, uh, I'll sum it up with the exact words. Um, hey man, you're on the side of the street holding a sign. Of course we have reasonable suspicion to stop you. And that was it, just that. Just you're holding a sign on the side of the street. And so that's why I wanted to see it. It's so simple, I can word it and, you know, I have to ask if there's any way you can get back to me. If not, yeah. I hate to admit, I might still be standing out on other corners, um, fully educated about the laws, and trying to tell the cops I'm fully educated, but then being defamed to the point where the defamation is what gets them to run my ID. I'm not happy about that. Like, like I said, I'm. I told you what the law is, sir. You don't even know what the law is. You won't even. And every time I said, why don't you look at the statue? He's like, oh, well, that's back in my car. I can go get that after I run your ID. No, no, I, I need to go get that first. Because if you're wrong about that, you're running my ID for no reason. And while that may not be an issue, um, you guys may not see it much. Um, the entire city of Fort Collins, where we're hometown is, is under a really big problem of homeless discrimination where they seem to think that uh, getting licenses or IDs of gold. So they even admit in the Colorado, and um, it's not about the sleep uh, with all the camping tickets that they're issuing. It's about all the other stuff that comes with it. And basically, they're advocating that there were, there were there's not enough funding for the jails for everyone that has warrants. That was the, and then they finish their story by saying, we need more funding for the jail for all of our warrants from our camping tickets. And so these guys, uh, I spent 15 minutes uh, arguing with them. No, I'm not committing a crime. I, you don't need my ID. I know you want why you want my ID. And they even volunteer. They're like, oh, we just want to make sure you don't have any warrants or um, uh, previous warnings. And I'm like, okay, so if I, have a, if I don't have a previous warning, 
can you still give me a warning now? And if I do have a previous warning, are you going to use that as a reasoning to give me the warning now? And so he was trying to get his reasonable suspicion, his probable cause, to write me a ticket via the information that he was going to pull from the ID, but he didn't have anything to get the ID. Yeah. And if you don't got anything to get the ID, if I'm not committing any laws, if I'm not breaking any laws, you falsely detain me. I've got my ID and everything. And so and just, uh, just kind of... Um, yeah, like we're just we're giving you guys a heads up. We're we're not the type of people that are you know gonna uh, try and um, you know break laws and purposes and get away with things like that. Um, like I said, we're we're really just trying to find uh, places where we can help our or ask for our film for help. And um, uh, I think that what mostly concerns me, uh, and I'll leave you this, I promise, is that uh, if it weren't for you guys and me talking to you and posing as a non-homeless person. Um, you guys gave us a dead answer. Yeah, yeah. And so, well, I figured it was a good try. I got... Exactly. And so I always got a straight answer about that meeting. Uh, every single time I've talked to other officers, or almost every time, uh, downstairs, multiple times, on the streets, city clerk's office, or city attorney's office, they all started the conversation off with, that's me, on property. And I'm just saying, you can take that as an argument, but... Half of your government has already determined that it's not. We're going to be using that as evidence in court that you guys determined it's not. That's why I want you to go talk to them. Because they... No, and, and like I tried to tell the officers, I was like... And I, I got through to some of them. I said, hey, I talked to the city clerks. And, and, and they're like, oh, okay. It sounds like you figured it out. Some, some other ones were argumentative. And it's just like, you know, if you guys want to go ticket people on what you think are medians, what I'm saying is the definition of a median is already included in the definition of a street and the statute lists off streets and highways and never mentions anything about private property. Meaning so that uh, it should be very, very obvious that a median on private property is not a median. And uh, like I said, we got that from you guys. Uh, it's, it's a no-brainer. Uh, we look up you know, maps online. Every county map shows, uh, it actually just shows a big property area and not even a street line. Right. You know. Right. And so, so I guess, uh, how do I word it? The defense in court that you didn't know that private properties, streets are non existent and their medians are not defined as medians um, is not a very good defense in court. Like, oh, I didn't know any better. When, you know, you guys show that you had the capacity to figure out without case law. And so I, we figure it out. It's really obvious, and uh, it just doesn't seem like a very good defense. That, oh, well, we didn't know it was a median, or what wasn't a median, when they could have called the same people that I talked to you guys and you called. And since there was, it seems like since there was a voluntary answer, it sounds like you guys definitively came up with the determination that it's you know, very obvious, it's not a median, it's not public property. And all I want, if, if you kindly could, is... Go talk to your city attorney down there and see what you can do. Otherwise, we'll just go to court. We don't mind. Let's so this is the marketplace. Yep. This is 104th. Yep. So we're really talking about that roadway right there. Yeah. So okay. Right there. Yep, that's yep. what I was thinking. Okay. Exactly. So if you guys want to go to trial, we'll have one you. That's not your power. You know. <laughs> but I figure, like I said. This is one of yours. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah so, so that was the yellow Okay. So and you are William, mm -hmm. your brother's David. Yep. Okay. And uh, so we've just been through the court process enough at this point that um, we're seeing where people are pushing things on one side of the government, wasting the other side's time and money. And that figures, like I said, you guys want a promotion. Um, it would just be a, you know, it looks ugly now that you have to go potentially talk to them. Um, but the, that's the price you guys pay for having a cop go out and they're thinking median's not a median or not a median. Um, we just... Uh, Honestly, uh, we know the cost of a, a jury trial, and like if that's you guys want that. How soon is that trial set for? Um, uh, he's putting in a jury demand. Um, okay. So it might be three weeks, six weeks, whatever. Okay. It hasn't been decided yet. Okay. You know, um, now truth be told, there are statute sections of uh, there's that one, the only one left that could be applicable, but that wasn't in their the original defense with the police report it showed, which is that no cars can move in a legal parking area. And the way that worded, I, I saw the word cannot. And so it's a, it's not a can and cannot. It's, um, sorry, it is versus can and cannot, not versus like a must, like you must park. 
and if you don't park, then it's a ticket. This was just our car is physically able to park if necessary for safety purposes. We were next to giant parking lots. So we don't really see it as though that would be a good defense either because um, people have always had, you know. And obviously, too, if it comes down to the real, you know, what's the purpose of the law? It's a safety issue. Well, if yeah. it's cars on private lots that are not moving um, and he's accessing those money, then it doesn't seem like there would be a safety need for someone to go park in there. Anyway, it's all from private property. It's whatever they want to do with their own money and time and so forth. The, for me, on that public roadway, I think it could be more of an issue because it's like, well, where are they going to go pull around and park? They're on public roadways and stuff. They can't just stop. But with a private property, you're allowed to just stop there. That's your property. Yes. Well, it's not allowed to, but it's all private property. Yeah. So, That's one way to look at it. Yeah. <coughs> so, you know, whether you have the policing ability on private property, uh, you guys claim as though, I mean, like I said, right away, the cops, the city attorney, they all thought that was a a road, and I'm like, usually we would surprise you in a trial by surprise uh, at court and be like, haha, you guys thought it was a, a median, or wasn't, and I guess you could say we've had a change of part recently, and we just want to drop everything, we don't want to waste any time, but uh, I, the whole reason why we wanted to go to trial um, is because uh, we haven't had the chance to go to court uh, in our lives, we've been railroaded at the time, so we've been tort fees to the point where people have wronged us and we haven't been able to get the paperwork to get them in court, and so... Um, now that we're starting to get pulled into actual courts for wrong things, we figured it'd be a grand opportunity to start our story off and explain why are we in North Glen doing this. And so now we, you know, we've determined that we have enough that we can start putting our, our, together our own complaints and not wasting your guys' time. So that's why we were we were no longer going to surprise you guys. Um, you, know, you guys have all the information we have for trial. If you still want to go to trial? By all means, let, okay. let the public decide. If not, I appreciate I imagine, the research you've done. Yeah, we're <laughs> honestly trying. The um, the conversations up here have always been so much better. The city attorney, she was just she she wouldn't accept that we knew that it was a meeting before. That 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 was our defense somehow. That she's like, oh, we're gonna go to trial over this. We caught you walking out on the public roadway, and it's like we confirmed all this. We were upset that she lied to her face, uh, our face and said, oh, you, you walked out into the road. And she basically wanted to continue prosecuting it for yeah. an image problem, I guess. Yeah, basically, we, uh, we that's how it, it just started off really, really, really rough. Uh, that's what I wanted to try and get starting off guys. polite, and then when we, uh, we see this every time. When we say it's a cop or a prosecutor, and they don't do their job, they do it. So. Yeah, very, very kind of thing. So, yeah, she, yeah, that was the probably the starting off was, She's just like, oh yeah, you were going out of the public roadway, and it's like, it's not in your police report. Uh, we even asked her to go through the police report first. Yeah. So it's like, uh, what we've noticed is, if you have one defense on paper of whatever your police officers use, he used median as a defense. Um, he uh, never mentioned the uh, entering on the public roadway, so. If you guys kind of try and change your defense all of a sudden and the city attorney says, well, you were entering on the public roadway, uh, it's like, his defense is here say that he did? We're going to be like, okay, okay, I'm good. Okay. Oh, okay, right. go. And then, thank you very much. Sorry for all the trouble, guys. I think you got the gist. We got it. Thanks.